In your math career, you have probably come across something like this, where we have an integer number to a factorial. A factorial, we've been taught, is simply five, and then you go the next integer down, the next integer down, the next integer down, integer down until you get to one. And that is um, multiply all together and boom, you got your factorial. So it's fascinating then when you start at a number lower than one. What happens when you take the factorial of, say, zero? Well, we might think, oh, well, <clears throat> zero times anything is itself, so I don't care what comes after it, it's zero. But it's not. The factorial of zero is actually one. And in this video, we're going to explain why this math phenomenon is not what I thought originally, which was some Reddit hoax. This is actually legit math. And we're going to prove it with a very well-known mathematical formula called the gamma function. The gamma function is as follows. It's a very well-known fu uh, function. It's the integral from zero to infinity of a new variable, the variable of integration, t, typically, to the n minus one times e, Euler's constant, to the negative t, let me make that a bit more clear for you guys, negative t with respect to t, okay? This is the gamma function. And Euler found out hundreds of years ago that this is actually equal to n minus one factorial. Now, quick star on the side here, the domain of this function is, um, not that's stupid, why did I do that? The domain of this function is uh, n is, n is the set of all real numbers such that n is greater than zero. Um, so, um, you know, at least for our purposes today, which is good because n here can equal one, and then one minus one would be zero, which means we can still find the factorial of zero. But we're going to do that, so, so let's just do that really quickly. So, if the factorial we need to find is zero, that means that n has to be one. So let's find gamma of one the integral from zero to infinity of t to the one minus one times negative t to the negative, times e to the negative t with respect to t. And then this just goes away because t to the zero power is just one, you multiply it by itself. And then we get that this is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t dt and the antiderivative of this is just negative e to the negative t evaluated at zero and infinity. Now, because infinity is not a set of all real numbers, we have to introduce a new variable b, which is in the set of all real numbers, that approaches infinity in arbitrary amount. And to do that, we're going to introduce a limit. So we're going to take a limit as some new, variable in, uh, some new variable b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative t evaluated at zero and now b. This is legit because as we defined, b is in the set of all real numbers. So let's just do this really quickly. b is some arbitrarily large number. So that means we can make it any big number we want. So I'm gonna rewrite this actually really quickly to make it a bit more obvious as the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over e to the negative, I'm um, sorry, 1 over e to the t, because it's a negative exponent. So then what we're going to say here is fundamental theorem of calculus. This means that this is evaluated here, and we subtract it here, right? Uh, so evaluated at b, evaluated at 0. So let's evaluate it at b. Negative 1 over e to some really big number is going to approach 0 because it's one over an arbitrarily large number. And at zero, well, that's zero. E to the zero is one. Negative one goes here, which means this e just equals one. And bada bing, bada boom. That is why um, uh, the factorial of zero is equal to one. So that's the end of the video. You can stop it now if you'd like. But in a minute, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna prove why this is the case. We're going to go through the same, same steps that Euler did all those years ago, and we're going to understand why it is that the gamma function is actually the same thing 
as the factorial. Because right now, you just have to take my word for it. You know, you just have to accept, oh, yep, well, that Euler dude, he seemed pretty cool. I'm going to take his word that it's equal to the factorial. But for those of you who are like, ain't no way that's the factorial. We're going to prove that it is. So the first thing we're going to have to do, remember, we have gamma at n being equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t, the n minus 1, times e to the negative t dt being equal to n minus 1 factorial. I am going to solve, the, um, so which means uh, I'm going to solve the integral for n plus 1. So taking gamma at n plus 1, anywhere we see an n, we plug in an n plus 1. That's how functions work, right? So this is now equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t. Now what's n plus 1 minus 1? It's just n, right? So it's the n times e to the negative t dt being equal to what's n minus 1 plus 1? It's just n, n factorial. Okay. <clears throat> this is kind of irrelevant at this point, but we're going to keep it here because it's cool. So now what we're going to do is let's just evaluate this integral. The way we're going to evaluate it is we're going to use integration by parts. So integration by parts dictates that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this t to the n is going to be our u. And this e to the negative t dt is going to be our dv. So that means that we can rewrite this, in, this integral as being equal to, via integration by parts, as nothing but u times v. So actually, let's really quickly define our variables. Let u equal t to the n, which means that du is nothing but nt to the n minus 1 dt, right? Power rule, very simple. And then we have v and our dv. Now dv is nothing but e to the negative t dt, and for those of you that uh, really, uh, the, the antiderivative of this is going to be negative e to the negative t, um, and I'll show that here in a minute. Uh, so this is just equal to negative t, negative e to the negative t, right? So really quickly, the reason this is true is because if we were to take the derivative of negative e to the negative t, right? Remember, negative t in this case is a variable. Negative e is a constant. You take the negative, bring it to the outside. We get negative, the derivative, of e to the negative t, right? And so this is a constant to an exponent. So we use the derivative laws for exponents. So we get negative uh, 1 times natural log of the base times e to the negative t times chain rule negative 1. Go away, go away, go away. That's what we started with. That's why it's a derivative. And that's why it's the antiderivative. So that, that checks out. Um, I'm going to erase this. It's taking up board space. Um, so now we can rewrite this, right? So this comes down and is rewritten as u times v. So uh, t to the n times negative. Actually, I'm going to rewrite this. This is a negative, which means I'm going to rewrite it with a negative 1 on the outside. Actually, that's stupid. Why are we doing that? <laughs> it's just negative. Uh, e to the negative t, evaluated at 0 and infinity, because those were our original bounds of integration, minus, because, minus, right, the, uh, the integral from 0 to infinity, of, and then we have v du, so uh, this time I am going to write a negative 1, e to the negative t, times, and then uh, du, so n times t to the n minus 1, and really there should be parentheses here and parentheses here, all times with respect to d. So um, something really cool is going to happen here, but really quickly, let's take, let's take care of this. This looks really complicated. It's not. We're going to do it to the side here really quickly. So evaluate this. We have a negative exponent here, so we're going to bring that to the bottom again. And so we get negative t to the n over e to the t evaluated at 0 and infinity, which means that we're going to take the limit as some b. Again, we did this earlier in the video, so I'm not going to explain why we're doing this, but this is how we evaluate things at infinity. And so value minus value, and we get, okay, so at infinity, we get, okay, negative t to the n, okay? So this right here, t is what's getting um, really, really big. So this is called linear growth. 
because it's the base, and then here it's in the exponent, so this is exponential growth, which means the bottom is growing faster than the top, so by the rules, that's going to be zero. And then when we evaluate this at zero, we get this is going to be um, zero to the n, which is zero over one, zero over one, zero, which means this whole thing is basically just zero. Right? Zero minus zero is zero, which means this whole thing goes away. The whole thing goes away. It's nothing but zero, which is really, really handy because now I can just say goodbye, effectively. So this now becomes negative integral from zero to infinity of negative one n times you know n, and then t to the n minus one, and then e to the negative t, and then dt. Now, remember, our variable of integration here is t, which means n is a constant, negative one is also a constant. So let's bring the negative one out. We'll get rid of that, and this becomes a positive, which means that this becomes the integral from zero to infinity. But really quickly, before we keep writing, let's slow down. This n is also a constant, right? It can go on the outside of the integral. n times the integral of t to the negative n minus 1 times e to the negative t dt. Does that seem at all familiar? We have at this point that gamma at n plus 1 is equal to n times the integral of t to the n minus 1 times e to the negative t dt. This is the gamma function, which means we can just plug gamma right back into here at n. So gamma at n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n. Or, let's go back to here. Now, I'm going to plug in n minus 1, n minus 1 plus 1, n minus 1 times gamma of n minus 1. These go away, which means that we have gamma of n being equal to n minus 1 times gamma at n minus 1, okay? Now, for those of you that know what a recursive function is, like in computer science, this is going to become very evident, but um, we're going to dive into why this is the case, okay? So remember, we already found, okay, known, okay, that gamma at 1 is equal to 1, because this is equal to 1 minus 1 factorial, which is 0 factorial, right? So we know this is true. This is the lowest the gamma function can go. Well, in the integer realm at least, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. So that's the lowest this can go. So I'm going to rewrite this, and we're about to uncover something absolutely beautiful. I can erase it. So right now we are at <clears throat> that gamma of n is nothing but n minus 1 times gamma of n minus 1. Okay? That's what we're at so far, right? That's what we just got to. So, let's say I want to find, remember we did the factorial at 5 earlier? Just remember, also known that 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? We know that. So if we can get gamma of 5, to look like, you know, 4 factorial, because 5 minus 1. So if we can get gamma of 5 to look like 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, then we've proved it. So let's go ahead and attempt to do that. So we have gamma. That was a horrible gamma. I'm very sorry. Gamma at 5 is equal to, okay, so the first thing we do is, all right, I can figure out this term. That's just 4, right? 5 minus 1, we can all do that. Okay. Times some unknown value, which is gamma at 4. I don't know gamma 4. Do you know gamma 4? I don't know gamma 4. Let's find it. Off to the side, we have gamma at 4 being equal to, okay, well, we know this is 3 times, okay, gamma at 3. Do you know what gamma of 3 is? I no clue. Well, we know that gamma of 3 is 2 times gamma at 2. Do you know what gamma 2 is? I still don't know what gamma at 2 is. Let's figure it out. Gamma at 2 is equal to 1 times gamma at 1. Do we know what that is? Yes, we do. It's 1. <coughs> Sorry. So 
let's go ahead. There's a lot of stuff here. Let's rewrite this. Okay, I'm going to bring this down here. So, sorry. So gamma at five, which remember should equal n minus one factorial or four factorial is nothing but four times this, which is actually just this, times gamma at, uh, gamma at three, which is actually just two times gamma at two, which is actually just one. That's a factorial. We just, we just proved it. Math.